Hey guys! Welcome to part one of my easy step by step guide to 3D printing. A basic understanding of how 3D printing works is very useful if you want to understand why prints might succeed and just as importantly why they might fail. So today we're going to have a brief and simplified look at the process. It begins not with the printer but with the resin. There's lots of different sorts, colours and brands out there, but they all have one thing in common. 3D resins are liquids, which become solid when exposed to UV light. Now UV light is pretty much everywhere that there's daylight, so keep that in mind. Resins come in opaque bottles for this reason. So if you leave the lid off your printer, or store your resin in a transparent bottle, you'll soon have a sturdy paperweight on your hands. And despite what people might tell you, you do not need direct sunlight. This lot froze inside my home on a windowsill that gets no direct sunlight. A 3D printer is essentially a device that controls the process of UV curing. Inside the base of an average printer, you'll find banks of LEDs, a laser, or even a projector, all of which emit UV light in patterns focused through a screen. As printing on top of the screen would ruin it and make printing a pretty costly affair, prints are constructed on removable build plates. The build plate is connected to what's called a Xeon, and this is raised and lowered by the turning of a screw thread. To contain the liquid resin, a tray sits between the screen and the build plate. These resin trays have a transparent film across the bottom known as an FEP. Now, these are developing even as I'm speaking and are often given fancier names. But think of them as FEPs or FEPs as they do the same job. These are generally flexible and taut like a drum. During a typical print run, the build plate is lowered on the Xeon and plunged into the resin. It's lowered until it's in very close proximity to the FEP. At that point, UV light is projected in a specified pattern and when this occurs, the resin hardens, sandwiched between the build plate and the FEP. The thickness of this print is very thin typically around 1 20th of a millimeter. The UV light then turns off and the build plate pulls away steadily. As it does, the print peels from the FEP and remains fixed on the build plate. If you listen carefully during the printing process, you can often hear this as a small tapping or ripping sound, which is perfectly normal. One layer has now been printed and it may have only taken a few seconds. However, prints typically require hundreds or even thousands of layers, each printed on top of the last. The size of the layer doesn't matter. It takes the same amount of time to print a layer this size as it does to print a layer this size, which makes resin printing a relatively fast process. For the second layer, the build plate once again descends, but this time not quite as far. The UV light fires, the resin hardens, and the second layer bonds to the first one and is completed. And so the process repeats again. Over a period of time, the prints build in layers, rising from the resin tray fixed firmly to the build plate. With the majority of printers, the print is formed upside down, hanging in place and dripping resin into the tray below. So gravity is always trying to pull the print from the plate. There's also a small amount of suction tugging on the print each time it rises from the FEP. But if the print is supported properly and the build plate is nice and level, it survives these forces and creates a successful print. But if the print isn't properly supported, or if the build plate isn't correctly fitted and leveled, 
the print dials, becoming an ugly blob on the FEP. Once complete, the build plate is removed and the print is freed from it. It's then cleaned, often in an alcohol-based solution to remove any uncured resin. Finally, it's set with an exposure of more UV light. And that, in a nutshell, is that. So we now have a basic idea of how the resin printing process works. And we've also got an idea about why resin prints might fail. There are other reasons, but plate leveling is one of the most common. So in the next video, we'll take a look at unboxing a typical 3D resin printer, assembling it and leveling the build plate. Until then, thanks for watching and happy printing.